We begin tonight with continuing coverage of a North Carolina state trooper shot in the line of duty. The shooting happening in Wilson County last night. Our team is monitoring developments. Dominique Moody is outside Vidant Medical Center with the latest on the trooper's condition and the suspects in the case. Michael Highland from our sister station in Raleigh has reaction from the trooper's grandfather. Our Brandon Truitt is live outside of the Highway Patrol barracks in Greenville with how local police agencies are reacting to this latest shooting. For the second time in less than a week, a local law enforcement officer recovering from a shooting following a traffic stop. The shooting happened Monday night in Wilson on Haynes Road. That prompted a countywide manhunt. Trooper Daniel C. Harrell was shot in the neck and the face. The windshield of his cruiser sprayed with more than 12 bullet holes. He was later rushed to Vinant Medical Center. And that's where we find nine on your sides, Dominique Moody. And Dominique, what's the latest on Trooper Harrell's condition? Shailen, Ken, I spoke with the Department of Public, of Public Safety, and they tell me that Trooper Harrell is still recovering and is, in still, and is in stable condition and is still hospitalized. This evening, we're taking a look at the investigation and how it began and how we got to this point. Just after 6 o'clock Monday, reports surfaced of a state trooper shot in Wilson County with a suspect on the run. Law enforcement were looking for John David Jones, considered armed and dangerous. A countywide manhunt began, and a cavalry of troopers, deputies, and officers from Pitt County helped in the search. Several resources were used, including canine officers and a helicopter. The State Highway Patrol later confirming that Trooper Daniel C. Harrell was making a traffic stop when he was shot. After the shooting, Harold was rushed to Vidant Hospital in Greenville. Anytime we have a brother or sister shot in the line of duty, uh, it affects all of us. Uh, these are very perilous times that law enforcement is, is, is living in, and uh, it's a very dangerous uh, environment for law enforcement to be working in. By 7 o'clock, images of Trooper Harold's damaged cruiser appeared. Multiple bullet holes were seen in the windshield on the driver's side. As dozens of officers searched the county, deputies were able to capture two other men in connection to the case. Then shortly before midnight, officers caught Jones in a wooded area off a of Cattail Road near Weaver Road. Jones faces a list of charges, including assault with a deadly weapon with intent to kill and inflict serious injury. Jones made his first court appearance this morning with the judge setting the bond at $1 million. The Department of Public Safety is condemning the recent shootings involving law enforcement officers and asking for the community to stop the violence. I am deeply concerned about the careless disregard for life. It seems to be that these incidents are on the uptick. We continue to pray for those that have suffered through this incident, this tragedy. Trooper Harrell is a third generational state highway patrolman. In 2014, he followed in his grandfather's and father's steps by joining the ranks. In Greenville, Dominique Moody, nine on your side. Dominique, thank you. Tonight, we are also hearing from Officer Harrell's grandfather, who worked for the highway patrol for 23 years. Reporter Michael Highland sat down with Trooper Harrell's grandfather today to learn more about his service to the community. The shooting happened just down the road from where I'm standing. Soon after it happened, the trooper's grandfather got a call he worried he would get one day, and now he's praying for his grandson to get better soon. You know, I just thank the Lord that he didn't get hurt no worse than this. In this picture from the day Trooper Daniel Harrell got sworn in, you see his father and grandfather among the smiling faces. Three generations of law enforcement in North Carolina. I'm proud of him, and I hope he can get over this psychologically. T.C. Cherry started with the Highway Patrol in 1962. The violence against police officers we see today is not something that weighed on him. Was this something you thought much about at all? No, I really didn't. I used to say I didn't have sense enough to be scared. He found out when his grandson was in high school that he wanted to do what his grandfather did. Right after he got on, people would say, didn't you try to talk to him out of it? And I said, heck no, I didn't want nobody to try to talk me out of it. He's still worried. And very concerned, you know, because he never knows from day to day. For the last day, he's watched the news coverage of what happened to his grandson, reminded of so many other officers who've come under fire. How many times do you have a news broadcast at 6 o'clock and don't talk about somebody in the United States shooting at the law, you know? It's just no respect anymore. While his grandson recovers at the hospital in Greenville, he hopes to make it there soon to see him. When you do get a chance to talk to your grandson, what do you want to tell him? How lucky it was. How the Lord looked after him. 
TC Cherry spent 23 years with the State Highway Patrol. He hopes to make it to Greenville on Wednesday to see his grandson in person. In Wilson County, Michael Highland, back to you. Not only is this story all too real for uh, Trooper Harrell's family at home, his work family is having to push through as well. Last night, news of Trooper Harrell's shooting spread quickly. Law enforcement agencies from across the state were called in to help. Not your science, Brandon Truitt has more tonight on how law enforcement officers are reacting to the latest shooting. Law enforcement from this area are dealing with the shooting of yet another colleague. Both Trooper Harrell and Officer Ainsworth are recovering tonight as their colleagues are learning to work through unique and difficult times. Once I received the call, it's like, and he told me his name, I said, man, I know who he is. They say there's no such thing as a normal day. You know, it's, it's kind of, you know, shocking at first. But Monday brought news of a scene no officer wants to work. But to see it and see one of our brothers in blue dealing with it, you know, it's, it's kind of like, it's like a hard hit home. Officers from Wilson to Pitt County joining in the response. Calls of a person shot, this time one of their own. So it hits you close to home when it happens to somebody that's, you know, doing the job you're doing. From the State Highway Patrol to local police departments, the scene of officer helping officer playing out yet again. A community with experience and coming together in the worst of times. It's very unfortunate. Uh, we've had two incidences local um, that left, you know, two of our brothers in the hospital and recovering, um, fighting for their lives. No doubt a stressful job. Many of us can't relate, but now something else to think about before heading out the door. Every officer every day knows that when we put on this uniform and we put on this bulletproof vest and this gun belt, that we run the risk of having the, the chance of not coming home. Many say it's a calling, others a duty. Regardless, these officers are carrying responsibility. You know, if somebody's not going to do the job, you know, somebody has to do the job. It may not be, you know, glamorous at all times and may be difficult and tough, but if we don't do it, um, who's going to do it? Trooper Taylor has a message for anyone watching this. He says if you're thinking about committing a crime, you're going to want to think again. 21st century policing and the technology they use has only made it more likely you will be caught, as has been the case in both of these officer shootings. In Greenville, Brandon Truitt, not on your side. We will continue to update you on the investigation and Trooper Harrell's condition, both on air and on the Nine Your Side News app. In Raleigh, police officer Charles Ainsworth is still in the hospital after a shooting left him seriously hurt last week. A GoFundMe page set up last week surpassed its initial goal of $50,000. So far, more than $76,000 have been raised. This is a live look at the campaign. A GoFundMe spokesperson says the platform is working with the campaign organizer to guarantee money raised reaches the officer and his family.